Change Incorporated and Alliance for Liberian Women International. Woman, I see a woman. All right, good morning. Um, welcome to the program. You're listening to the Costa Show. I'm Henry Pedro Costa. Um, today is uh, the 24th day of March. 2020 and uh, very glad to be here. Good morning to you, Boca. Yeah, good morning, Costa. Uh, it's a brand new day and it's good to be here, like you said. A wonderful Tuesday morning. Yeah, well. <sighs> this there's really nothing wonderful about today. It's actually a sad day uh, for us. Uh, you know, one of our brothers, one of our friends, it's like a, he was like a member of our family, passed yeah. away yesterday. And, uh, and I, I mean, I saw the news on Facebook and I was really, really shocked. Um, for those of you who listen to radio, who followed radio in Liberia for for many years, or, or even a number of years, and you might be familiar with the name Mr. Decent. That was his radio name. Now, he was a wonderful announcer. He had a rich, wonderful voice. Uh, Randa KB, aka Mr. Decent. Um, before I went into the radio business, I, I was a fan of Randa KB, Mr. Decent. And um, 
Then we got into the radio business. In 2014, we started Voice FM. And Randa KB at the time used to work, if I'm not mistaken, for Kings FM. Right, Boka? Yeah, Kings FM. And there were several Kings FM guys who came to work for us. Randa KB, Lawrence Kwawa, and Wendell also, right? Yeah, Wendell Nimlin. Wendell Nimlin. And these are people I used to listen to, you know, on the radio. And uh, and now they were working for me. It was a great honor. And we became, we quickly became friends. A decent, wonderful guy. Had a great sense of humor. Very nice guy. And then, of course, we got shot down in 2016. Ellen Johnson Salib shot a voice FM down. And so we lost our radio station. And so Decent and the rest of the guys, they had to go and hustle, find something else to do. But they remained a member of our family. And Decent and I remained friends. He would come to the station every night and then even when we opened Roots FM yeah he used to come even though he was working somewhere else now with what Gordon Ver Verulium yeah and uh he would come to the radio station anytime decent could just come in walking you know and the last time I heard from decent was on the 18th of March, I was actually on this show. It was Decent's birthday. And he was, you know, as you, as usual, getting in touch with me to say that it was his birthday and I and I needed to do something. I, I knew the code, I mean, and uh, I was on the show and I didn't get to do something for his birthday because I forgot. And then last night I saw these posts on Facebook that Decent is dead. And I just, a very young man, full of life. You know, one of the things Decent used to do for me is, he used to do my my CDs, you know? Yeah. He would do my mix. I was a Decent, uh, do me some songs. And then he would do me, he would do, couple of CDs for me and he knew whenever I requested that you know it, it would mean something good for him very nice guy and so he's dead and gone and so I I, I, um, I I still haven't gotten to the bottom of it yet but I spoke to um, uh, I spoke to a mutual friend very close to him Lawrence Kwa to ask Lawrence what happened and Lawrence sent me a, a voice message a few hours ago to say that Decent had uh, Decent had a stroke last yeah. month mm -hmm. and they took him to the hospital and they tried to make him well and he, you know, he just bounced back quickly. Yeah. And everyone was pleasantly surprised. And no one knew that that, that, that stroke would come back. And then I'm told it came back this time and it, and, uh, with greater fe ferocity. And so he's gone. I want to say decent. Rest, rest in peace, my, my dear brother. You're a very nice guy, just as your name says, Mr. Decent. <laughs> I remember Decent was talking with his friend over here in the States, this female friend. And he introduced me to her, you know, virtually. You know, he sent me her number, I spoke with her. 
and he wanted me to say nice things about him to her. <laughs> and I remember the first thing I said, oh, I mean, this is my brother. He's a nice guy. And I mean, as a matter of fact, that's why he has the name Mr. Decent. He's a decent guy. You know, and now Decent is gone. This life, man, is brutal. You know, every time a young person dies, anybody for that matter, particularly a young person, it really pains me. You know, someone who really tried to make something of himself, someone so full of life, a very nice guy to be around, and they just die. It's painful, it's hurtful, you know. And it reminds me of our human frailty. Human nature. We're here today, tomorrow we're gone. Nothing is promised in this world, not even life. It's very fragile. Very fragile. Make the most of each day you have. Make the most of each day you have. Because you're not promised tomorrow. Yeah. You're not promised tomorrow. All right. Also today, March the 24th, one year ago, exactly today, I received a most shocking news. And I was in denial and total disbelief. And there was this this guy, this friend of mine. I, I, I stopped talking to him for a while. And that night I just couldn't sleep for some reason. I was up very late. And, and the guy said to me, uh, Costa, I'm, I'm, I'm on a highway, the Robbers View Highway, and an accident has just occurred. And I'm making my way to the scene. When I arrive on the, on the scene, I will let you know. This was, I think, well after 12 midnight, like Liberian time, the 24th of March. And the guy got to the scene and then he took out his phone and he shot a video. But be before he shot the video and sent the video to me, he said, Costa, they just told me that Representative Adolf Lawrence is the one in the accident. I said, no, bro, you, you gotta be serious. No, it's not possible, bro. He said, yeah. He ran into a truck, parked a timber truck, a truck loaded with planks. And Adolf Lawrence ran into the pickup, the truck. The truck was parked right in the, in the middle of the road. In the middle of the road. I said, no, bro, please. This can't be true. Not possible. Not Adolf. Immediately, I just said, no way. Can't be Adolf Lawrence. Can be my friend. And then he said, okay, let me do a video. Oh my God. And this guy did a video. And he sent me a video on WhatsApp. I was devastated. I saw the video of Adolf lying there. Stuck into the driver's seat, stuck in the driver's seat. Completely knocked out, cold, gone. Oh my God. You know, I, Adam Lawrence and myself, they didn't hang out together. We didn't go eating out together and doing those things together. But we were very, very cool. To 
Toward the end, we became even closer. We would talk on a nearly daily basis. On a nearly daily basis, Adolf and I would talk. <coughs> Adolf, uh, Adolf's death really hit me hard. Today makes exactly one year since we lost him. Yeah. I want to say to his dear wife, Senator Yomli Kanga Lars, it's one year on since we love, we lost it off. And you do not feel the pain and loss alone. There's no way we can compare what you feel with what we feel is incomparable. But we miss him too, dearly. You know, every day we see, I, I often describe life as, as, a, as like a battlefront. And we are all on the battlefront every day. And we're like soldiers on the battlefront. You know, you have to believe that it's not going to be you. It's going to be the next person. But somebody is going to die. Someday. Just keep believing. It's not going to be me. It's going to be somebody else. But until it is you, it is, you got to keep believing that it is not going to be you who dies. But somebody is going to die. And it might be you. It might be you. It might be the next person. But each day, you keep moving on. Yeah. Until it is you. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yes. Life, 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 life. Okay, folks. Uh, good morning to you all. And sorry I'm a little like this this morning. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um... I've, I've I've been following a little the situation going on in Guinea. Next door, Guinea. Have you been following, Walker? Yes, of course, I've been following. So they had a referendum and legislative elections on Sunday. Yeah. President Afa Conde. He's 82 years old. Before becoming president, he was an, a very well-respected and admired opposition leader. He was a professor of law, if I'm not mistaken, of law or of history. One of the two. He was a man who was believed to be a champion of democracy. Afakande. He eventually he suffered at the hands of the ruling establishment for many, for at least two decades. And then eventually Alpha Conde himself became president of the country. Who would have thought that the once unwavering champion of democracy would become himself an agent of to to totalitarianism, changing the constitution to allow him run for a third term Bringing his country to the brinks of civil war. You know, last week I read an article of done on the decision by Ivorian President Alpha, I mean, uh, Alassan Dramani Watara. Watara announced that he will not run for president. He he will not. Or he wouldn't he wouldn't be changing his country's constitution to allow him run for a third term in office 
And before then, many people had thought that Wat Watara would do that. That Watara would change the constitution to run for president. But then Watara suddenly changed his mind. And he said he wishes to leave on a high note. He does not want to go down fighting. And when Watara made his announcement, <laughs> according to the article I read, carried in one of these international news outlets, a minister from Guinea called a colleague of his in the Ivory Coast mm. to say to the minister that they were not pleased that Watara ha had announced his decision not to seek a third term by Look changing the constitution. Look at that. And he said that the, the decision by Watara to make such a pronouncement hot on the heels of efforts being made by his friend and colleague, <laughs> Afa Conde. They said that decision was selfish on Watara's part. Mm. Because it would embarrass Afa Conde, who is frantically trying to change the constitution of Guinea to allow him himself run for a third term. And so he said, why are you doing this to your friend, Professor Afa Conde? I mean, yeah, we are struggling to change the constitution for our man to run for the third time, and you are making this pronouncement at this critical juncture. And can you imagine that, Bonka? You do a good thing, and somebody is calling and saying, Why are you doing this good thing now? <laughs> when we are trying to do a bad thing, and you are doing a good thing now to make us look even worse. Or, or <laughs> more bad than what we already are. That was essentially what the minister of this Guinean minister was lamenting over the phone with his Ivorian counterpart that what Watara had done was bad, even though it was good for democracy and even opposition in 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 the in the Africos was celebrating Alassane Dramani Watara. But the Guinean minister was angry. You are embarrassing us in Guinea. Afa Conde is trying to change the constitution and you are telling us that it is a bad thing. And so on Sunday. But you know, there's something I want to talk about here. About the Guinean. There's, there, there's a takeaway from the Guinean situation. I want to salute all Guineans today. Including, especially the ones. Particularly the ones who have stood up. Who have fought. Coming out in large crowds all across Guinea, protesting, particularly in Conakry, protesting against the draconian, well, undemocratic effort by the 82 year old Conde to change the constitution to allow him himself run for a third term. I mean, the Guineans have paid with their lives. On Sunday, Afa Conde went ahead with this vote to change the constitution. It was a bloody Sunday in Guinea. Mm. Ten people were murdered. Their bodies riddled, most of them, with bullet holes. Afa Conde deployed the military all over the country. They beat people up, they shot them up. The people went on the rampage in several parts of the country, particularly in the capital, Conakry. Uh, voting stations were ransacked, ballot boxes removed. Tons of people didn't get to vote. Tons of people boycotted the election and the referendum. But Alpha Conde is going to announce that the people voted to change the constitution to favor him. That is what they are going to announce. I do not understand these Africans. You know, sometimes, you know, one of the things that pisses me off more than anything is when the African man opens his mouth and says, we are poor because of the white man, the way the white man treats us. Africans are sick people. You know? 
I mean, what? Why would there be any kind of prosperity and growth in a country where one man thinks it is his God-given right to rule for as long as he wants? How could there be any kind of prosperity in that country? I don't get it. I do not get it. Bad examples have been said. And look at Ecowas. Not much they can do. They're sitting there and they're watching these Guineans. They're seeing what happened in Guinea. Mm -hmm. Look at what's happening in Togo. For Nasingbe. His father, Nasingbe Iyadima, was president for almost 40 years. Since the establishment of Togo. For Nasingbe did not win any election his brother was the one who was elected president he made his brother disappear Buakai, this man made his brother disappear that is a mystery they cannot find his brother living or dead mm. he he made his brother vanish and he stole the election and he's president of the country you know some ECOWAS executive was, was t we were in this gallery and he was saying to us, they were telling us the problems. The, the, this, the current ECOWAS ambassador who was leaving now, by the way, I'm going to get to that uh, subject at some point. And he was saying, oh, you know, uh, Ford Nassimbe told the, the ECOWAS people, you know, he said uh, all his life, all he's known is power. His father was president. He's president now. How else does anybody expect him to live? Without being close to power or having power, are you are you kidding me, Boaga? Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? How should anybody expect him to to live? That he cannot live yeah. without power. Yeah. This I went to Togo, Boaga. It is one of yeah. the most militarized countries in West Africa. There are soldiers all over the place. I drove through Togo to go to to go to Benin. From the border with Ghana all the way through Togo straight to Benin. Military checkpoints everywhere in Togo. The country is highly militarized. The people hate his guts for Nasimbe. But he doesn't care. Mm. He's in power. Look at what happened in Guinea, Guinea Bissau. Yeah. I mean, I mean Africa is a mess. The president fires the prime minister. The prime minister refuses to leave the job. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's crazy. And you see what's happening with George Weah? Mark my words. Detectors do not happen overnight. <laughs> yeah. It is the people that often give rise to detectors. It is the way they treat that person. They deify them. They set them above reproach. Nothing they do is wrong. And then that person starts to believe that ah, oh, I can I can I can get away with a with a with a lap. The first thing is George Weah is orchestrating his grand scheme to steal the elections. And many of you are sitting there, you're watching it, you're thinking to yourselves, oh, you know what? He's not going to be able to do that. He's too stupid to, to, to mastermind and do that sort of thing. Of course, he's not, he's not that stupid. This man was catching hell. Now he's president with access to unlimited resources to support his lifestyle. And you think he's suddenly going to want to give that up of course not and this is what you get this is how then everything he does the people around him telling oh yeah mr president it is okay yeah you have the power to do it you have the right to do it this is your father's farm Ta -ta we have left this country for you as your as your inheritance you may do as you please. And this is how the dictators are. They are bred. 
it takes time before they 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 germinate they grow and then they get mature it is sad extremely extremely sad now I want to do this as a birthday tr treat requested for by Glendy uh, Glendy Junior Reeves as a birthday treat for Mrs. Josie Buyo Watson today's your birthday happy birthday to you you've got every reason to be happy every reason to celebrate we find ourselves in the most difficult period in the world to be alive and to be healthy is something to be grateful for I wish you all the best on your birthday it's from me as well um, all, all the best now yesterday we read on social media some, somebody sent me the diplomatic cable the diplomatic note uh, former American ambassador to Liberia for four years who overstayed her welcome ambassador Christine Elder left the country I mean, quite suddenly she left on Saturday she's not coming back at least not as ambassador which I'm very happy for and some of you just don't understand why I think that this woman was not good for the country she threatened the opposition everything America stands for I mean America stands for democracy when the opposition felt cheated the late counselor Charles Bromskin took his case to the Supreme Court not to the butchers he went to the Supreme Court supported by some opposition members the Supreme Court ruled not in his favor Christine Elder issued a statement against a democratic process of going to court to seek redress over grievances of the fraudulent nature of the elections that was undemocratic very un-American Christine Elder did that. Threatened the opposition and talked about us trying to undermine the country's stability and democracy. Who undermines stability and democracy by going to court? Where on God's earth does that happen? The lady was too close to Georgia, too close for my comfort. Too close. She would go with him to the football pitch He's sweating and she's there sitting out to cheer him on to, to practice football. You would see her doing fist bump with him and posting it all over the place. The, the ambassador of the United States of America should not be that close to any president. Especially one who is so messed up as corrupt as George Weir. But Christine Yano was too close to George Weir. Oh, I couldn't stand it. I know she didn't like me. I mean, one particular thing she did to me was during my ordeal in January when I was in the country with that phony witch hunt of an investigation into how I obtained my laissez passe, I got Senator Chris Coons to reach out to the State Department concerned about my situation. The State Department reached out on Senator Chris Coons' instructions to the American ambassador. Madam Ambassador, Senator Chris Coons would like to know is concerned about Henry Costa's situation. What can you tell us? Oh, she said, oh, don't worry. This investigation is, is a legitimate investigation. I'm on top of it. I'm, I'm in touch with the Minister of Justice. This is what Madam Christine Elder said. And know what I was saying in the last time, many people, oh, Costa, don't say, you know, you know, the American people, who told you that's what America is going to go after me for saying what the American ambassador did to me? Oh, no. America doesn't work that way. Christine Elder. And I'm sure many of her people are listening to me. They, they listen to my show every morning and they, they record it at the American Embassy. I have evidence of that. The State Department contacted the ambassador. 
to say we are concerned about Henry Costa's safety. She said, oh, don't worry, but everything is okay. You, do you think Madam Elder didn't know that that so-called investigation into how I obtained the laissez passe was a witch hunt? She did know. But she didn't care because she was just too close to Josh Weir. During our protest, this lady was just meddling too much, issuing statements. Don't do this. You can't protest on this day. You can't do this. It is, it is not the place of the ambassador to be dictating to us when to exercise a constitutional democratic right. Something we learned from the United States of America. That when people feel aggrieved, they protest non-violently, peaceably. We learned that from America. But this lady was trying to take that away from us in our own country. Something that we learned from her country. You know? And that was very un-American and unacceptable to some of us. Now, I'm not going to go into why she left, and but I'm told the State Department was not happy with her. And that's why she was recalled. Quickly, horribly, before her replacement could even arrive. And so they asked the Deputy uh, Mission Chief to act in her stead until a new ambassador is confirmed in the States and, and, and dispatched to Liberia. The United States ambassador cannot be that close to a corrupt detector like George Weir, a thief. It is unhealthy. America, the way we see America, not perfect, but as, a, as an example of good governance, of, of democracy, to lead the way, to stand with what's right and condemn it and not condone what's wrong. But Christine Elder was not, she, 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 she didn't do that. Every, when was the last time you ever heard that woman issue a statement condemning anything wrong George Weah and people had done? Nada, nothing. But every time it was the opposition. So I'm very happy that Christine Elder has gone back to America, to her country. Very happy. I wish her the best in her future endeavors. But it, it is a good thing that she's no longer in my country as ambassador. We want to make this very clear. We reaffirm our, our friendship. A commitment to our friendship. Very special friendship with the United States. God knows how much we love this country, America. How, how much this country means to us as a country and as a people. And we love America. I often say to people, there is perhaps no other country on the face of the earth where Americanism or American sentiments are so high. Liberians love America so, so much. Mm -hmm. So, so much. You know? And, and one ambassador is not going to change that. We will never lose faith in our special relationship with America. We love this country. It means a lot to us. You call your American ambassador, Jawia go pride of football, you're dead. Soon money to Jawia. You are the ambassador of the greatest country on the face of the earth. The mother of democracy. And America always stands for democracy. I mean, come on, what are you getting from Liberia? You're not getting oil. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't got no oil. Then don't condone the man. Because there's nothing you're getting from Liberia. Economically, politically, nothing. So don't you have no reason to tolerate George Weir's behavior. Set him straight. Tell him the truth. And then here is another person that's leaving that I'm very excited about. The ECOWAS ambassador. But it's, that, that is long overdue. Cause long overdue. Baka, that man should have gone, been gone a long time. Mm -hmm. Baba Tunde Ajisumu. Ajisumu is finally leaving. 
I these people, we know what they did to us during the protest time. Oh, they were twisting our arms. He was the one writing all of the press statement coming out of. The I say of, of, he of, was the one working closely with the other ambassadors, influencing them. Yeah, working for George Weah, trying to oh, Ajisumo, 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 very mm. close to Miguel and close to Weah, working for them in their interest. I'm telling you something serious. Look at today. Ajisumo is finally leaving. Hmm. Yeah, on Friday they're having a farewell thing for him. I wish Ajisumo best of luck. <laughs> Let him go back to Nigeria to his country. Because that he may leave with a heavy heart though. Because that, he may never wanted to leave. That his business, he can leave with lay hat set. <laughs> Thank God Ajisumo is leaving. I'm a very happy man when it comes to those two developments. Linda, I mean, uh, uh, Christine Elder gone, Ajisumo gone, thank God. Now, I, I hope the Americans will send a strong ambassador to replace Christine. Preferably a retired mili mili military leader. A retired mili military leader to set George Weah straight. <laughs> yes. Somebody like former ambassador. Uh, what's what's that ambassador name, man? Oh man, I'm thinking about his name, man. William something, man. William was a boo or something. Ambassador William something. I'm thinking, you know, a strong ambassador. Let them mm -hmm. send us a strong ambassador to Liberia. We don't want an American ambassador that will go practice football with George Weah. You know. A strong Republican ambassador. No nonsense person. Who will not take nonsense from George Weah. You know, I, I, I wonder why did that woman love George Weah's company so much? They make her speak English. They make stupid. And, and for somebody like her, well experienced woman to be sitting there talking to that man, I know what she's enjoying by his company. The man is an ignorant man. You know, I say we wait for a strong ambassador. A strong ambassador. Strong. Yeah. Somebody wanna Sweeney, I think William Sweeney, eh? There was a strong ambassador called William Sweeney or something. We want a strong ambassador to like to Liberia. Somebody who will not take no nonsense. They will not take nonsense from Georgia. What what the what the hell is what the hell is this boy talking? That they got a buzzer that I want. They say, you're telling him to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of ambassador I, I, I want to come to, to, to Liberia. We love America so much. We Liberians. And we're not, a, we're not ashamed of that. I, I know our, our history is a little, you know, like, like, like that. But that's the way it is. We still love our America. And we love a strong America in our in our country, and a strong America in the in the world. You see, so we want a strong ambassador to set George Weah straight and help to protect our democracy. And, you know, let Christine go sit on there. Yeah, so we're very happy about that. We're celebrating those two things. Baka, we're going to go to the phone lines. Christine Elder is gone. No more. Ambassador of Liberia of the U.S. to Liberia. Babatunde Ajisumo, gone. No more to be telling people when to protest and when not to protest. Mm -hmm. In America, do they tell people when to protest? No way. America no way. is the world's greatest democracy, the greatest country on, in the history of the world. They don't tell you when and where. They don't tell you when and where to protest. We want a strong ambassador. To come to Liberia. A Republican, no nonsense about it. Somebody like Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> want, <laughs> we want a Donald Trump ambassador. Woman, I got I said I got ambassador we want. They told me I come and tell the ambassador say, oh, Lego part of football. Eh? Lego the football feet. The ambassador say, what is this shit who president wants to say to me? <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's take more, let's take some calls there. Yeah. We love America. And the Americans know how much we love them. You know? You tell every man say can't go for a war for America, they will go plenty. Sure. They love their America. And we'll keep it that way. We have a special relationship with this country. And and, and the reason why the ordinary Liberians have not benefited as much from, from America is because of the corrupt regimes that we've had. And, and at this particular point, the American foreign policy to Liberia has to be to see the upliftment of the ordinary Liberian people who love America so much. And not to support and protect corrupt gov governments. I know my American friends are listening in the political affairs and those people. Let me repeat. American policy toward Liberia needs to be recalibrated with a new ambassador. Stand with the people, not the government. Because you know what? It makes practical sense. You're not getting anything from the government. Nothing. So you have no reason to condone the bad behavior of the government. I know American foreign policy. I know how it works. If America benefits or is benefiting something from a government or from a president, they will turn a blind eye to the excesses of that government. That is what they do. The day they were signing Abasha and many de detectors in, Niger in, Niger in Nigeria, before him and after him. They, they did it with Mabudu Seseseku of Zaire. Now DRC. They do it with detectors all over the world. They turn a blind eye to the lack of rights and freedom and democracy in Saudi Arabia because they're getting the oil. We know that. But what is America benefiting from Liberia that it has to condone the undemocratic excesses of the governments. No, America doesn't have to do that. So I'm appealing to the Americans, your foreign policy toward my country, Liberia, a country full of people who love you out of this world, has to be recalibrated. You do not need to tolerate the corrupt regimes in Liberia because you're not benefiting. It is not in your strategic, economic, and political, or your commercial and political interest to do that. What are you benefiting from Liberia? Nothing. So your interest, your policy toward my country should be targeted toward the people. The concern for the welfare and the prosperity of the ordinary Liberian man who loves you. And not to protect and pamper and cushion corrupt governments in my country. That is my appeal to the Americans. Go write it and send it to the State Department. I'm telling the Americans, I know they're listening to me as they listen to me every morning. Write it. Say the biggest talk show host, the most one, one of the most influential li Liberians is telling you that your our foreign policy needs to be recalibrated. We need to focus on the interests of the ordinary Liberian people who love America at a particularly interesting period in the world. Liberians love America more than any other country anywhere in Africa. And so your foreign policy needs to be recalibrated. Focus on the people. Do not condone and pamper the corrupt regimes. Help build our democracy, make it stronger. Make our leaders accountable to their people. So that when something happens in a country, God forbid, you wouldn't, uh, you, the, the, we wouldn't be crying out to, to the Americans and taking our dead bodies in, in front of your embassy as we did during our civil war. Yeah. So that is my humble appeal to our dear, beloved American friends. Recalibrate your foreign policy toward my country. Let it be focused on the upliftment of the people as opposed to protecting and turning a blind eye to corrupt regimes because it is not in your strategic, economic, and political interest to, to do so. Let's go to the phone lines and take some calls. 0770-102-102-086-0101. Keep your calls coming in this morning. You'll be live on the Costa Show. Yes. 077-0102-102-086-010383. Um, yesterday, too, it was uh, the um, launch of the uh, uh, coronavirus tax folks. Uh, what kind of coronavirus tax folks? They met it with Parliament in front of the, the city hall. Oh, and then uh, uh, he thought about the launch of task force. No, don't waste our time on that in the member, okay? Let's take our calls in. Listen, let me put this. Let, let me just uh, squeeze this information in quickly. 
You remember some time ago we talked about a sergeant Flumokali? Let's just cost that baggy. Let's take this international caller, they will come to you. Go yes, ahead. do that. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, welcome, my brother. Good. My name is William Bowie Jewett. I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome, William. Uh, I'm calling in. It, 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 good to hear. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, um, it was good that you joined the program remembering uh, Jesus and Thank you very much, sir. And and I want to say happy birthday to her. Did he say today is her birthday? Oh, today would have been her birthday, right? Yeah. I want to wish her a happy heavenly birthday. Yes. Um, his wife, I believe she was a nurse. She moved to Liberia. She just loved the country so, so much. Uh, even though she became an American citizen, she started a business. She started a clinic and all, I think. And somebody just broke into her home and gruesomely murdered her. Yep. And it's been two years now. They, as he said, there's been no, uh, they've made no sense of it. No police report, nothing of the sort. The country she loved so much, she gave up America to go back to Liberia to make a difference. They killed her. Murdered her in cold blood. Yeah. And nothing. Not even a police re report, you know. Let's go back to the lines, Boaka. Let's take some more calls then. You were saying something before. Uh... Yes, uh, Captain. You know, and I want to say this to the Americans, if you're listening too. You train our military, you know, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, and you spend hundreds of millions to train our army to make it a professional institution. And we have trouble there now. I just want to bring this to your attention. You may not know this. Now, several months ago, we announced that there was an incident at the Kesley Barracks where a mm -hmm. sergeant, Flumokoli, 
uh, locked up his brigade commander at gunpoint. Mm. Sergeant Flo McCauley got up one morning and one day and just took his gun and went to his brigade commander, put him uh, under gunpoint, uh, held him at gunpoint and took him to the cell and locked him up. Colonel Theophilus Dana was, is his brigade commander in question. And so what happened is that they ended up, uh, they arrested Sergeant Flumokoli and they locked him up without due process. For six months, mm. Sergeant, yeah, Sergeant Colley was locked up for six months at the Kinsley Barracks. No trial whatsoever. But then here's what happened. On Thursday of last week, he was summarily discharged from the army. No trial. He was not tried. Every man, even in the military, deserves to be heard. Deserves to have his day in court. Sergeant Colley was discharged after six months in prison without trial. And then they say it was administrative discharge. And they didn't stop there. They took him from the clinic on because he was sick. He, six months in jail, the guy got sick, and he was uh, lying there in the in the uh, in the uh, in the in the clinic at the barracks. They took him from his sick bed, where he had been confined, receiving treatment for high blood pressure. And they took him to the LMP headquarters, Waka. Mm -hmm. And they turned him over to the LMP headquarters. And they asked, and they filed a complaint against him to be charged with murder. Wow. Attempted murder, according to them. They say he attempted to murder his boss. Now he held his boss at gunpoint and put him in jail. He did not shoot him, he didn't try to shoot him. He mm -hmm. put his boss in jail. The brigade commander Theophilus Dana. Now his family members are trying to get in contact with him. They're trying to get a lawyer. He is at the last time we checked the Liberia National Police Headquarters. They kept him. And this is not something the Americans would condone. That's why I'm telling, I'm announcing it now so that the Americans would know because they invested so much in training our military. And so, Sergeant Clo uh, uh, Flo McCauley is has been discharged from the military without due process. And they took him from his, from his sick bed in the barracks to the LNP headquarters on Thursday and they have slammed him with a charge of attempted murder. This is extremely sad. This is not the army that the American trained. And so we want the Americans to know. And, and uh, don't overlook it. The Americans listen to, to this show religiously. And they, I'm pretty sure they will look into this because this is not the military that they trained. They trained a professional army. An army, an army that should be managed according to the UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice. This is not the army they trained. And so we are bringing this to the attention of our good friends, the Americans. And the military attaché at the embassy would, get, would definitely get to the bottom of, of this once it comes to their attention. And I, and I believe it now has. So... As I speak, uh, you will see something is going to happen. The Americans are going to get involved. Now, if Sa what Sergeant Colley did, I'm pretty sure in the military it was wrong to put his, uh, he held his boss, brigade commander at gunpoint and, and locked him up in the jail cell. And you know why he said he did it, a black guy? No. He said he was frustrated with the living conditions at the barracks. 
no electricity the ration wasn't coming on time the, the, the food was not coming I mean the, the, the salaries were not being paid on, on time and so he said he was frustrated the living conditions miserable they had to be going to fetch water from the, from the, from the creek or the well and they were sick and the, and, 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 and the barracks needed renovation and they, they were living on a deplorable condition so this man said he was frustrated so he took his gun and, and arrested and put his brigade commander on a gunpoint now that's, that man needs to go to see a counselor Boaka. yeah he needs a ter he needs to see a therapist you know because he was going out of, out of his head he said he said I'm frustrated we are catching hell in the barracks we live here like animals no light no water we're sleeping in these tight little rooms our wives and our kids have to sleep in the same tight room with us you know we can't even have intimacy with our wives because our kids are sleeping in the same room you know and that is why he did what he did and he said he said i'm frustrated he didn't shoot his, the brigade commander so yes they could they, they could put him on trial but before doing that they should provide counseling for him Absolutely. he should see a therapist but instead of having him see a therapist they locked him up for six months they, they deny him due process then you know what they were doing no. is they were denying his wife his salary oh they never pay his salary to his wife you see this is not the army that america trained sure no this is not the army america trained let's let's go back to the phone lines let's take some more calls all right zero seven seven zero one oh two one oh two zero eight eight six zero one zero three eight three let me see if we can uh, take somebody. Okay, we just missed our call. 0770 Keep your calls coming in. You'll be live on the Costa show this morning. Yeah, we talk a wide range of issues. The um, the uh, U.S. ambassador will be leaving the country. Has and already left, Boakai. Since Saturday, Saturday, she has left. She left Sorry. the country. So let us see if we can take um, our brother from this angle here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. DJ Lumet. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. Uh, good morning, Waka, and good morning to him and Pedro Costa. Thank you. Thank you this morning for the information given us this morning. Uh, look, Costa, you said it all, and I'm uh, myself jubilating this morning that I. Uh, Get a news that the American ambassador is she is gone, and then the Ecuadorian ambassador is gone. So it's a jubilation this morning, and I pray and hope that the ambassador that will be coming from America should be a top one that will not listen to rhetoric, and the Ecuadorian ambassador that will be coming here too will also play a neutral role to strengthen our government because what we're going through in this country now. We need somebody that already put the president feet to the fire. Because Costa, the last thing our government should do is to close down churches. Even the Ebola that were in this country, early never allowed for churches to close. Because if you close down church, that means that nobody else will get room to be sad God. So if you close down church, that means you want to close everything up. But thank God yesterday the government appealed to the churches, the council of churches that what they did were not correct. And we should have service, but it shouldn't be packed. So I pray to God that because of that I know the identical virus is real. The only thing that I tell people keep this thing, keep watching your hands. But by the grace of God, and I speak in the spirit of the Lord, that our virus will not enter this country, and it is not yet, it is not yet. The reason is being that Costa, the nurses are complaining, they don't even have gloves. If this, if this, if this virus comes into this country, Costa, people will die more than Ebola. So I get pray to our health system is broken down, and nothing else we can get from this government, only 419. Like yesterday, I was listening, they say, this, the fire salmon was in for, for well, I don't know what kind of reason, and people cry around. Right? I say, it's free for him. Someone was in there with the one coming around here, telling people about the government is great. They think that government are done, no other government are done it before. So they no other government are done it, let you go and rest. That is more than eating, let eating, let you go and rest. Look at the situation with the journalist issue. 
things are just when you have to scatter, nothing strong. Now you have people agreeing, say, only certain media institutions go. Yeah, well, what is that? So they find the money now that they came in that they are the organization going. They find to either money and, and cajole the people that they certain people money. So you leave Prime Evan or you leave OK Evan or you leave all the Google Media Institution of the Share Executive Mansion Prime Taji. These are these are the people that they want to get some money to at the end of the day. Then maybe let us say they spend the money here and there. But we watch them. Okay. They worry if people are money well free. They have the local money will not go free. Right. They will get a cow. Thank you, DJ Lomé, for making your contribution at uh, 0770-102. You know, yeah. Speaking of Samuel Wozi, mm -hmm. Samuel Wozi was uh, assistant minister, just one of those insignificant boys in the in the government who used to say all kind of nonsense. I remember during the June 7 protest, the weeks and days leading up to the protest, Wozi used to be on Facebook threatening people. Yeah. In fact, there was one particular post. Samuel Wozi did in which he said when the protesters those who would be attending the protest should bid farewell to their loved ones and family members before they leave their homes because they would not return. Samuel Wozi. Samuel Wozi, but, but, but folks, do you know why Samuel Wozi was fired by the president yesterday? Let me tell you why. Samuel Wozi runs a newspaper called The Cyclone. Mm-hmm. C Y C L O N E cyclone. It's a natural disaster that happens, almost like a tornado or something. Samuel Wozi used to write all kinds of juicy, juicy la la in there for George Weir. Praising Weir. In fact, I have a photograph here. I'm, I'm going to show you. You see, John Weir and, and Natalia McGill sitting here with a cyclone newspaper in their hands. They're, they're reading the newspaper. That's the cyclone. Some useless piece of trash that bought guys here at newspaper. See it? This is John Weir and Natalia Magill reading a cyclone, one of their favorite newspapers. So Samuel Wozi was their was their guy writing and lying and talking nonsense for them. But guess what now? Boy guy. The scene newspaper that made Samuel Wozi used to be one of John Weir's favorites. One of his favorite sicko sicko fans and and, and Praise and worship singers. It's the same music what I led to Samuel Wozi's lo uh, downfall, losing his job. <laughs> so Samuel Wozi went and did this story yesterday. This is what cost him his his job. This is cyclone. I'm holding it to those who are watching the live video. And the headline of the story he did in his paper yesterday, the front page. Liberians decry President Weir's neck pick beseech senate to reject him the boy say librarian po avest for joia appointing nubusi nwakudiki he said the boy vow they say why joia made the man chairman election commission that the headline that made sama was he lose a joy yesterday joia fire in quick 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 and yesterday at the uh borough city hall Mm. The male rep, yeah, the male, the male rep, yeah, uh, 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 Jefferson called you foot to foot. I said the man mean, did not know this one would happen. I said that they had lying out. Let their pee pee pie newspaper, they poor get our mail lost it all. The headline Liberians decry President Weir's neck pick. That means the man who we are appointed to be chairman of the election commission, hey, like, I want a man. Like, mm. they will go to the Senate. That one made that one made Joey Avell. So I said, eh? That nonsense people that hey you my man. And if I made a cheat, they put the report in there quickly. No, no wasting time. Mm. So go for you. <laughs> Samuel was it go. That one made Samuel was it to go. Damn it. Soon the fire Samuel was it, they appoint one of my men. Hey, that that boy happened. That boy was praying for that boy. I don't know how many prayer women that boy went to for the common job. My, mm -hmm. my man Daniel uh, da, da, Daniel Thomas. What? Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Tamar got patience. That boy was praying. Man moving, man dropping. Soon the fire, Samuel was in the appointed man straight. That don't want to Hey! Mm. Samuel was in lost his job yesterday because he said librarians are angry about George. We are appointing uh, Nubusi. Nubusi. 
Undubusi no Budiki. He said, Why, Joe, we have to appoint a man? That one man, Samuel was the last of Joe. And Samuel was he, he's a former uh, uh, member of the United Party. The United Party man. That, that ran in district number. He ain't pa, he ran against his father. He ran against his father in district number 12. Masterwell County, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I say, my man, I happy man. Samuel was he. They see newspaper that used to write nonsense in that one made you lose your job. Let's take more calls there. Someone was go in fact at the time one see more headline from the paper said now. More headline. Say your way initial information, you get more information. You get more information. <laughs> <laughs> go around more headline. Stupid boy. During the protest time he said they were they were they were K protesters. Go right nonsense now. That takes the question here. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Ibrahim Esano. I'm calling for New Georgia Cannabis this morning. Welcome, Mr. Sano. Go ahead, take one minute, bro. Yeah, I want to speak on the coronavirus issue. Why, you know, they are closing the churches and the mosques and all the entertainment centers. We believe that the coronavirus is real. But I don't believe, I personally don't believe that the coronavirus is real in La Pira. The coronavirus that we are going to uh, Hey, hey, my man, I beg you, don't say that one year. Corona is yeah. real and it is in La Pira. But listen to me. Why I'm saying this is because the government here, they are making money out of this coronavirus issue. And we are praying God that it should not be real in Liberia. My man, it is real. Don't talk about praying God. You're already in the country, my brother. Stop it. Stop that one there. I beg you. It's real. Believe me. If you believe the government, believe me. To go to the go for country congregation prayer. You know, for God to answer our prayer concerning about this the deadly disease. You know, if you close all those places, you don't. We don't know that who the uh, prayer, uh, God prayer, God can uh, answer the prayer. So this thing is not really. Somehow I stay in doubt. Okay, bro. But yeah. Okay. Don't 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 be don't be uh, in doubt. Yeah, Corona yeah. real. It's real. Behave yourself. Do yeah. social distancing. Wash your hands. Let's take more seven, calls. Seven seven zero one. I mean, what's what's some of what's it? Man, what's some of it? Call man. Let's take this person here. Somebody was again called Nana. I may stay resting. I stay thinking. I may be. <laughs> uh, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Uh, I'm going to have to go to the My good friend, your brother. I'm going to go to bless you and give you all life. It's my coming with the day. Good morning, my, my dear brother. Wel welcome. Uh, thank you so much. I did. I did. This is one of my most famous. They have opened the mouth. They keep going to the country. So they have been where they have been getting. On it goes down all the months in Saudi Arabia. So I think something he wants to talk about. But all trying to see everybody has a friend to the Costa. Every Costa. You are the only person that's speaking for the Liberian people. You are the only person that engages in this government. You are the only person. You are the only person in Liberia. All the government that enter you during the protest, you will bother with a disgrace. You will bother with a disgrace. Because somebody got here because of endless spirit, they don't fight for integrity. Everything is for money, they don't see the interests of this country. Oh, Aaron Costa, we'll kill Aaron Costa, we'll do it one year, we'll do it one year. Someone will see, we say, and uh, I'm not happy, rest in peace. Because you will not spend the government where you did. Clear Costa, continue your movement. Continue your movement, I'm proud of you to go in heaven. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Man, we gotta, we we gotta, we, we 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 gotta resist it, my man. We gotta fight against it, man. We're gonna fight against it. We're gonna do that. We will get to the house with the We will get to the house with the We will get to the house with the family. Every person has to be strong with you. It's from my heart. You are a real, 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 you are a real picture. He really loves the love of you. You too, my brother. You too. You too, you too, you too, you too man. And God will continue to bless you. Thank you so much. 
Thank you too, my brother. God bless you too, Mac, for all you do. Uh, you know, I talk to a lot of people all the time. We talk about Mac Jabat Jabate. They will ask me for his phone number. And, uh, and you know, they want to send something to him, to send to somebody, to do some, some something. He's a very trustworthy guy. And he always does what people, you know, uh, send money to him for. You know, he would go and and shine a light on some conditions and somebody's story and somebody's situation and then raise money for that person and he would make sure the beneficiary would receive what, whatever money he raises wonderful guy Mike Jabate let's take some more calls there let's take somebody here quickly good morning I mean what well, man Lord what 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 Lord like man man I'm calling a few days yeah. yeah, please, but you have to speak a little bit louder, okay? Yeah, yeah, I think we need to have a phone. I'm going to have a phone. I'm going to have a phone. I don't know what the role Lola is. Lola, I need to call Lola today and find out what happened. And also the um, the religious advisor. Yeah, let's see. Come yeah, on. Our, 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 our man, Sega Sega Jibo. I hope yeah. he's doing good. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Anyone you calling from? Yeah, uh, thank you. Good morning. Uh, let me say good morning to you and the petrol first Um Good morning to you, brother. This is Yancy Police. I'm talking about John Yee from Nigeria. Welcome. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, thank you, Petro, for the love raise your issue this, this morning. And we understand we... Petro, you see, uh, to the issue about the U.S., the former U.S. ambassador to Liberia, uh, Christian Eller. During the Jamestown protest, uh, Christian Eller endorsed the protest. She, uh, yes, she does the protest. But if you observe, if you observe, if you do your calculation, your observation after the Johnson protest, Christine Ella go into a task with Ambassador Via, where she 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 start she start to say some sort of things or do things uh, on behalf of Ambassador Via, and knowing that the masses is not in favor of that, we 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 plan the council of HR plan protest, a pending protest uh, during the 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 the, the July twenty sixth celebration. Yeah, uh, protest. We still came out with a report that the protest is misplaced. Why in the world were you? Uh, why in the world in the Great United States were you misplaced so many protest? The people had to express their grievances to the government. We still didn't stop there. She came a lot. She came again during the reasonable protest. She always, she always interfering when it comes to the masses to respect that you want to do So I want to thank the United States by 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 we join Christian Ella and we pray for a new ambassador who will understand the plan because I believe I believe the people the people of Jeff in Kine what is going to go and what is unfolding in that world the people of Jeff in Kine what is happening in this country the people of Jeff in Kine the 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 main thing which ambassador we are is ruling the unscrupulous main thing is ruling the city okay, the people of Jeff in Kine so for Christian Ella to go on be go go go, go one side is unfortunate okay, so, bro. Then, uh, right. let me just conclude on the the, the appointment the, the the appointment made by ambassador we are uh, for, for NDC. If you're going to say you said it all, we have said it before that this person will want to use this means to break the leg. But then we have known that there is no way, there is no way in the agreement that we want to win a major election in this country. There is no way. Take your own record. There is no way. I agree with you. Senatorial election, both senatorial election and presidential election. There is no way. So the only thing you can do to avoid uh, losing the, the pending election is to appoint those who in the church is to appoint those who will break the election in the field. Now, we don't have a Supreme Court here because we understand that if you go to the Supreme Court, it will be charged away and it will be in favor of the Amazon we are. So there is nothing we'll be able to do. So we are appealing to the Honorable Senate. And I believe as long as we have some, we have some men and women in the Senate who have the balls to refuse that uh, the new appointment made by the President. So we are appealing to them to, okay. to, 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 to accept 
If you call, please, you, you know the line can be based, so we have to make way for other people. Uh, 0770 102 102 Let's take this person here quickly. Good morning. Hello. Yeah, hello. Uh, international caller. Anyone you calling from? Good morning, Doctor. I'm Abraham Sanya calling from United Kingdom. Okay, Abraham, welcome. Uh, morning, Pastor. Morning, morning, morning. Welcome. Yeah, but, uh, but I, I just want to say something about this uh, down in, in Liberia or in the world today. Our people in Liberia, we got all the all time to go to church and the mosque. If you see the Ebola, we show up a lot of people in Liberia, it was because of denial. What was happening in Liberia during the uh, Ebola time? I was in Liberia during the Ebola when most of our Muslim brothers refused to listen to the attacks. People continue to go to the mosque and they continue to build the body, they continue to go and, and sit down in gatherings. Yeah, and, 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 and that caused a lot of people to, to die. Yeah, we listen, we, we, we saw that even in my yard where I live, uh, we got a mom there, and in fact, told the Imam that I'm, not, I'm no longer coming in the mosque after the Ebola. We are following with you. I know, I know I got no problem with that because I want to save my family life. My people in that village, your place, don't forget to pay church and most business, just stay home and watch it go. You must stay home. You must be waiting for the government. You must be waiting for the for yourself, your family, your children. They think you have even worked in the UK. Now, now, we need lockdown. We're not allowed to work out. We're not going to make it yourself. We're not going to come back. We can't associate with nobody. Nobody can say, no friend can come around you. But so please, you're not doing it for government, you're doing it for yourself. Just stay away. That's you're true. Stay you're stay by yourself. You're living to the environment. You're forgot about the mosque. You're forgot about the churches. Thank you, government, for the production. I appreciate you. Thank you, my Thank brother. You for God bless you, and God bless Mama Liberia. Thank, Thank you, my you. brother, and may God bless you too. Yes, the UK is, 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 under, uh, is on lockdown. And and that brother is right. Boaka during the Ebola, plenty of people just said our lie. Hey man, the Ebola ain't Liberia. Yeah. And the, our Muslim brothers carry on with their normal uh, funeral rites, R I T E S, where they will bathe the body. Ebola body, they bathing it, they doing all that kind of thing. It costs a lot of people to die. The churches too, they contend with the same behavior. You know. <laughs> In Lofa, in Lofa. Uh, hey, Quaru Boni. The people Bonnie, die there Bonnie, too much. Just from that thing. Just from that. From bathing body in Quaru Boni. That small number of human being die. Hayaka. Whole quarters. Quarters. Yeah. Were wiped away. Because they won't bathe. They won't bathe the body. Ah, you can't risk your lives just because you want to practice custom married things. Thing that you've been doing, but the crisis here, yeah, stop it. Uh, you know, it's good. I don't call us Saudi Arabia, Mike Jabate, huh? Saudi Arabia, where people can go to Mecca. The people say nobody going to the mosque. True, sure, sure. Then you want to say, what kind of mosque you get so much that better than the BP mosque in Saudi Arabia? Huh? Well, Prophet Muhammad mosque in Saudi Arabia, they say nobody going inside. The Prophet the mosque. mosque. Yeah, they close it. The Prophet Muhammad, his own mosque, they close the mosque. Then you say you won't go to mass, you won't go to church. Yeah, little tear, you can pray to God anywhere. You gotta go to church, you gotta go to mass. When Ebola, when Corona goes away, you can go back to your mocks and to your look, 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 look at the people here in America. Their lives have changed. Their lives as they knew it. You think we're living normal life here, boy? We're not living normal life here. Yeah. You can't even go nowhere, you can't touch nobody, you can't do the one, you can't do that one. Everybody afraid. We need to be careful. We need to we need to we need to be careful. Let's go back to the line. Okay, let's take this person. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Your name is calling from. Welcome. 
Yeah, good morning, Walker. This is Sam calling from Loki Town. Welcome, Sam. Thank you. Uh, Walker, uh, the reason I'm calling is that uh, the government, even though they have done some good things in terms of being a uh, weather when it comes to the coronavirus, but I think in terms of implementation, Walker, it has to, because this one of our ways has to work. We still see all the folks in the same place. We still see a lot of, got, a lot of people gathering in a specific area, more than six persons. So I think that police need to have checkpoints at a very professional one level to check every vehicle that will be found in a while to make sure that people are adhering to the laws that have been made. Because other than that, I'm very happy to we like to overlook it just to get out of hand. So I read observed this morning and they did not really go down well with the police need to implement that order. Three person is a vehicle. But this morning, probably have four to three persons Thanks so much, my brother, for calling in. That thing should be our own safety. Uh, you know, let me tell you something. You <laughs> know, say, your life, you as an individual, you have the greatest responsibility to preserve your own life. That's why they say the first law of nature is self preservation. Preserving your own life ought to be the primary thing, your top priority for every and each individual. Now, for you to say that somebody should enforce it, somebody should do it for you, you know, it's just, first of all, this is what people should do. People should self-regulate. Mm -hmm. The government has issued a public ordinance regarding commercial trans transport. Do yep. not, or commercial transportation, do not carry more than three passengers in the back of the car. They're trying to avoid people touching one another. Because touching is one of the easiest ways you can contract the virus if somebody sitting next to you has it, if they, if they cough on you or they sneeze on you. Now, if I go and see a taxi, I hear a taxi, it stops. And I see that there are more than three, uh, there are three people already in the back. And I'm the fourth mm -hmm. person. I'm not, I'm not going to get in that car. Yeah. Are you in such a hurry to go where you're going that you would risk your life? But this is the way we're us Liberians. We take everything for granted. We saw Ebola kill 4,800 people in our country. We we're taking mm -hmm. it for a joke. People should self-regulate. Are you so desperate to go to town or to go to work that you will ride in a taxi with already three passengers in the back and get crammed up during an Ebola, an Ebola, a coronavirus outbreak? Are you that desperate? No, I would not do it. I wouldn't do it. Now, Texas dollars, well, come on. Most of them, they, they don't care. They just want to make money. But yeah, you have but to protect yourselves. Mm -hmm. You, the passengers, the commuters, have to protect yourselves. Do not get crammed up like sardines in a taxi cab or a bus because you're trying to commute from point A to point B. Do not, if you have to be late, be late, but stay alive. Be late to work, be late to hustle, but stay alive. Let's take a few more calls, my guy, and we'll wind this thing down. Our people are stubborn. And, and yeah. anybody who calls here and say they don't believe in the corona is in Liberia, I'm sorry, we're, we're not going to entertain you to say that. We know we don't trust the government. The government lies. The, the government steals. But corona is in the country. we got international partners that are there too. WHO, UNDP, all those people. You think they're lying too? Pre preserve your lives. Follow the regulations. Social yeah. distancing is very important. Let's take some more calls. 0770-102-102-86-010-383 are the phone lines that you can call. And you will be live here this morning. Let us see if we can take uh, our brother Mohammed. Mohammed, welcome. Good morning, boy guy. Yeah. Uh, Good morning to Aaron Pedro Costa. Morning, my brother. My name is Mohamed Askona, and I'm calling for Johnson Hill. I, uh, COVID-19 is real. I, I'm not going to miss my war now. It's absolutely true. But I have a question for Pedro. Mm. I, we have one of our overcrowding, we have real overcrowding. Do you think that that is necessary? Well, I mean, we need to be careful. 
uh, other parts of the world, they're locking down everything, and they, they, they're telling people not to gather in large crowds. And so red light, water, water side, those are hot spots. God forbid, somebody goes there and a couple of people can spread that virus or so many people are dead. The chances of spreading the virus are extremely high in densely populated areas. Tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll take the phone numbers for all the senators. We'll read them out on the show and we'll publish them on Facebook. Mm. That's what we're gonna do. All the senators. But again, as I said, I'm waiting for our political leaders. If if they're not tall, we'll, we'll just sit on there. That all. Oh, I've, I've been doing my part. I've been giving reasons why, how we can stop this man from being confirmed. I've I've said my piece. I'm waiting for our leaders to lead. I will follow. Yes, I think I'm told they idea. were supposed to meet yesterday. I don't know whether they had their meeting, but they must lead on this issue. They must lead. We need their leadership. We need them to engage their senators. They are their senators. Let them engage with them before they can go and engage with other sen senators from other political parties or independent ones. Let's take right. that caller. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Where are you calling from? Oh, your line is bad, my brother. So take another call up. Uh, that will be our last one. Yeah, let me take uh, Momo the Critical Johnson on this line. Uh, Momo, good morning and welcome. Momo. Yeah. Good morning and welcome. Yeah. You are live on the show, my man. Hi, uh, good morning. Good morning, brother, and good morning to our leader. Morning, 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 Momo. Uh, I want to say assalamu alaikum to my Muslim brothers and sisters in Latvia and around the world. Alaikum uh, salam. Momo, your money fee. Let's take somebody here quickly. Yeah, and that will be the last caller. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. You're live. You're anybody calling from? Yeah, this is 
Okay, welcome, my brother. Yeah, I just want to, to, to say thank you to uh, you and Costa this morning. You know, information sharing is uh, very vital thing for the government of our society, especially on the issues that has to do with this virus. Uh, I think for, for me, I, I got one opinion. Government is issuing measures to see how best they can be able to curse the situation and keep like the United States. But then on the other hand, also has the, 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 the also have a responsibility to be able to uh, be able to maintain a self social distancing. They are home you don't have any kind of sexual operation within the wrong part of Monrovia, even out of Monrovia in another rural part of uh, Liberia. Yeah, I think another thing government also need to do is that uh, they are issuing measures to be able to help this situation. We also have an economic uh, problem. There are people who will be in who I think the government also has sent them who but they have not received pay and they are at the bureau of this. We we'll also have a look at that. Even the big part of the we we'll also have some right area. Some of them will be going to my look at there. Some companies that send people who we yesterday, and maybe they could send them home and they didn't even give anything to be able to sustain itself. Because if you don't have nothing to say, so you definitely can say if they get a moment, they got to come on the street. So, government got to look at zero issues of you or the help for us. Because if they don't think we work on this, Government also issue those bureau methods to be able to help their citizens and provide something for them to be able to keep it healthy. You can have a lack of stuff in the house to help food. And you close down my area, you close down the staircase, you close down other areas, and you can get nothing out. Definitely, that man will come back on the street. So they have to look at these issues both sides to keep like you and at least to reduce our cases. So thank you, brother. Of course, I thank you for uh, a quarter this month. Thanks so much for calling in, my brother. Uh, All right, folks. There you have it. This brings us to an end of today's broadcast. Corona is in Liberia. I know you may not trust the government, but this is not a government telling you so. The international community confirms this information. Corona is in the country. The World Bank would not have given 15 million to fight Corona if they didn't know for a fact that Corona is in the country. So, Don... Uh, don't let your usual uh, tenant tendency to downplay things and, and distrust the government cause you to risk your life. Corona is in the country. When you catch it, you will die. Not only will you die, most likely you will infect other people who will die. Don't be stupid and die. Protect yourself. Yeah. Talk about no corona in the country. What kind of nonsense is that? You didn't see anything doing Ebola at time. No Ebola. You went ahead behaving as though there was no Ebola. Thousands of you died. Protect yourself, oh. Protect yourself. I see you, Wagai. All right.